Hey YouTube, welcome back to my channel. My name is Frosty. Today we're going to be doing a lift kit on this fifth wheel. So what I'm running into is the height of this pin on my fifth wheel is nine inches too low for the height of my fifth wheel on my truck. Let me show you. So this truck is a 99 F550 from the ground to the top of my companion fifth wheel, I have 54 inches. And this is adjusted all the way down. There's, there's no way to go any lower on that. This is a 1996 24 foot Nash fifth wheel. My wife and I just recently bought this. We're um, excited to be working on it and camping with it, taking our daughter on trips. So. Uh, we're kind of going through the whole inside right now and then my job today is to get it mechanically suitable for travel. So the uh, fifth wheel hitch is 54. This was like 45 inches from here to the ground. So we have a nine inch gap really this way that I need to raise this point up. I can't really raise this any further. It's already in the highest position. I could maybe cut this up and fabricate it so that it sits higher. Um, but something I think is just gonna be easier is I'll just flip the leaf springs on the axle. So right now it's axle over leaf spring. And today what I'm gonna do is put the axles under the leaf springs. And that should give me five to six inches of lift. And then I have bigger tires for it as well. Those will go on later, but that they're an inch taller than these are. So that should really close that gap for me so I can get this thing to tow down the road. Right now it's it's got that Cali lean to it, that squat in the back. The back bumper almost drags when it's hooked up to the truck because it's, it's sitting so high in the front. So we're going to try to fix that today. So before we get started, we'll take a couple measurements. I've got the camper completely leveled. See the little bubble? She's right there in the middle. We're right at 45 inches from the kingpin down. And here at the front bulkhead of the trailer, we're at 16 and a half. In the middle of the wheel arch, about 29 and a half. But that should give us uh, some base measurements to start with and, and see what we get. Looking under this trailer, You can see the leaf springs are underneath the axle. And all you have to do really is you take your U-bolts off and your plate, then you have to cut your electric brake, brake lines or unplug them if you have them. Mine are right here. And then you take your wheels off, you can drop either side of your leaf spring to help your axle come out. So you just Pull your axle out and then you flip it from this side to this side but what you have to do is your spring perch is on the wrong side of your axle so what i did is i bought new leaf spring perches and i'm going to weld those to the top of the axle whatever you do if you do an axle flip on a trailer do not just literally flip your axle around so this is on top because i don't know if you can tell but there is a there is a bend in your trailer axle tube and it is bent up like an arch and that helps when the axle bends and there's a load on it that helps flex it out a little bit and it puts the right camber on your tires so if you were just to flip the whole axle your bend would go from instead of being like this it would now be on the wrong side and it would wear your tires wrong um, so that's a whole mess of problems your brakes would be upside down so don't just flip your axle by rotating it you actually have to keep it stationary and drop it underneath and then put a new perch on it and there's kits too where you can just bolt in a new hanger but um, 
it's far, far cheaper if you have a welder just to buy these. I think I paid, gosh, like $24, something like that, 20 bucks for four of these hangers. I've got two axles, two hangers on each axle, so I'm covered there. I'll put a link in the description so you guys can see where I got these from and how much I paid, but they weren't expensive. Um, and then I also bought galvanized U-bolts and top plates and they were $25 a set, so they're 50 bucks in hardware for each axle. So 50 bucks or 20 bucks, I had about $75 in this flip kit for this trailer. If you go on um, Amazon or eBay or you know e-trailer, you can buy the bolt-on lift kits. They're like $75 per axle, so you can do it for about 150 bucks. Uh, and there's no welding and they use like some bolts to locate your new hanger. Uh, I didn't like that. Well, I don't like paying the extra $75 if I don't have to, and I don't like bolting stuff together when, you know, I have a welder and I can just glue it right back into place, no problem. So I'll include the parts and the links in the description if you guys are interested in, in looking at what I used. So I'm gonna grab a couple jacks and get some blocks and we're gonna start lifting this camper up in the ground and get the tires off and we'll start pulling it apart. camper lifted up as high as I feel comfortable going and then I've got four jack stands under it and then two jacks to to hold it because I don't want to be getting squished by a camper. Death by camper is not something I'm signed up for. So we'll go ahead and pull these wheels off. I took the wheels off the other side I checked the wheel bearings and there was quite a bit of play in those so I see wheel bearings in my future yep you grab that drum on the top and the bottom she's pretty loose kind of expected that on an old trailer anytime you buy something used it always kind of seems like it needs endless amounts of work so wheel bearings for sure on this but let's get to it probably just cut those u-bolts probably be faster than trying to get them zipped out so before you go cutting your wires take a good look at how they're run so I've got two lines coming in. This line right here and this line right here. So this is your main this is your main line coming down and mine is teed into this spot which then comes off and goes back to the other axle. But you also have brakes on the other side and that electric line should be run through this side of the tube or inside of the tube. It comes out that hole. So you've actually got four wires right here. You can see the four. And they're joined pretty well. Looks like they did that really nicely. And you've got four wires right here. So instead of making four splices, I can just cut it right in the middle here where it joins down to a thicker gauge. So I'll cut it right in the middle and we'll use uh, the same type of connector here to put them back together. The 
So we'll start by taking this leaf spring bolt out. crash a little bit we'll see yeah it was pretty uneventful it's exactly what I wanted and that flopped down real easy the thing about this job is you have to have so many jacks I only have three luckily I think I can get away with three. We'll just jack this up until we take tension off the bolt. And it slides right out. <laughs> Safety first, everybody. All right, both those bolts are out. This one fell off a little bit on me. No harm, no foul, everything's fine. As you can see, the axles are just dangling from the leaf springs. When you put these back together, you gotta make sure this shackle, this part is pointed up on both sides. I'll take my grinder now and we'll cut those U-bolts and we can slide our axles out. These are under quite a bit of tension, so when you cut through these, they'll probably pop. And once those are cut, you can just rotate them and then you can pull them out through the bottom. And you can see your whole, your whole plate comes out. These U-bolts, well at least in my case, are, are rusted beyond the point where I'd ever want to re try to reuse them. But these are usually, should be a one-time use, only they stretch when you tighten them. So um, replace your U-bolts. They're cheap. These plates are pretty thin too. They look like 3 16 or quarter inch. The ones I got are 5 16 and they're galvanized. So it's 25 bucks for two plates and four U-bolts. So it's 50 bucks to do both axles on both sides. It's worth the money. Looks like they should be at the bottom of the ocean. So I got my leaf springs put back up because now the axles are gonna be mounted underneath so you can go ahead and you can mount these back up. Make sure these are facing up, not down. I showed you before, but this thing is real sloppy. I can't imagine the tire alignment's gonna last long with that, so. I'm going to try to source these locally. Keep my fingers crossed. I'm sure there's got to be somewhere that has them. But then we'll slide these axles out. Right, guys it's been a couple hours I had to drive up to uh, Menominee Falls to get some new hardware for uh, the spring so I got new equalizers these are 40 bucks a piece I guess they're hard to get now so we got two equalizers we got like 14 bolts we got new bushings for our leaf springs And then we got new hangers, or shackles, whatever you want to call these. Um, something I did, I'm going to try, 
my car trailer, these things always seem to wear out super fast. So one of these goes on either side of the leaf spring. So what I did is I bought extra hangers so I could double them up and then I got a little bit longer bolt. So I can put two of them on each side of the leaf spring. And I'm gonna see if they last a lot longer because uh, it seems like they always oval out and they seem to wear out. It's one of the fastest wearing items in this whole setup. So I'm gonna double those up and see how that goes. And all this was actually pretty pricey. Ended up being about 160 bucks. The slop that was in all the old parts here was just, it was just unacceptable. I'm like, well, I don't really wanna come back in here and take it all apart later. Might as well just bite the bullet, buy it now. So it took about two and a half, three hours to go up there and had a nice little lunch with my wife and my daughter. So it worked out good, but we'll go ahead and get some of the new hardware on the leaf springs. I gotta get out the old bushings that are in here and push in these bushings. They all go in here in each leaf spring. Then here you can see what I was talking about. So you'll have normally just the one shackle. I'm gonna do two on each side and hopefully those wear a lot longer. I'll hang our new equalizer up. Got a nylon lock washer or lock nut. So we'll double these up. And then this one is a pinch nut. It's a little bit thinner profile, so I can run two of these. And here you can see just how ovaled out those holes are. That's why I'm gonna run two of them. This one's really bad. The hole's probably 50% bigger than it should be. So I'm gonna run two of these on each side and hopefully that'll prolong the life of that. And to get these bushings out, I just jam my welding pliers down inside the bushing as far as I can get it. Then I twist kind of curl it up on itself. Pulls right out. Here's a look at those old bushings. This one was completely worn through. This one wasn't too bad. Wasn't worn through anywhere. And we've got the new ones. They should just push right in. Okay, your leaf spring. Into our shackles. Make sure these are pointing up. All right, so we've got our spring hung. When we put our axles back in, we'll make sure that both sides, both sides of these are tilted up like this. Right now they're, they're wrong, but they don't always stay when all this is loose. But they should look like this. When we put it all back together. Okay, I've got the axle up here on the sawhorse. You can see the old perches down here where it was a spring under. We're gonna take the new ones and we're gonna just mount them right above the old ones. We're gonna make sure they're obviously centered in there. Um, but I'm gonna grind all this out. And then we're gonna measure it so these are perfectly flat. The surface of this is parallel 
to the surface of the old one. Get it measured up and weld it on. All right, we took a flap disc and we got the X down to shiny bare metal on all of those, and of course on the other side. So we'll go ahead and get them measured, set them at the exact same parallel angle as the old one. We'll tack them in and then we'll lightning glue them together. What I did to get this where I wanted it was, obviously I C-clamped it into place, so that puts it 99% of the way there um, as far as the parallel angle goes. So then I measured from the top of this to the bottom of this, and that was 3 and 7 16 and I did the same thing on the other side. That is 3 and 7 16 Then I eyeballed it left to right, left to right, then I measured it from here to the back, and then from here the back of the, the drum mounting hardware or drum mounting face so she's nice and square the new perch is a little bit wider than the old one so it's real tough to uh, see it on camera but it is as perfect as I think I can get it it's probably better <laughs> than it was factory so I'm gonna go ahead and tack that in and then I'll do the same process to the other three and then once all four are tacked in, then I'll weld her up. Now that we have the two tacks on either side, I'm going to go ahead and tack each corner at the bottom. boys and girls we've got all our tack welds on all four axles all two axles excuse me so now we'll set this up and then we'll finish weld those spring pads and then we can put everything back together this has actually been a very easy project I've really enjoyed working on it so far starting to run out of gas and it's windy out but I'll take those welding complete the welding is all finished so I thought I'd just throw a quick coat of rust-oleum paint on that we are ready to put it all back together and hopefully this camper sits up quite a bit taller than it did before This is the kit that I bought from eBay. It was $24.95 for two top plates and four U-bolts, so $50. I think it was free shipping. Uh, it came from California, so I had to wait a little bit for it. I'm, a, I'm in Wisconsin. But the thing I liked about this kit is these are 5 16 thick, so they're not gonna bend on you. Nearly as easy as the ones that were there. And these are galvanized 
and so are these. So they should hold up to the weather quite a bit longer. That's important here in Wisconsin. We use salt and all that junk in the winter time. Not that this camper will be driven in the winter, but anything we can do to, to help prevent the rust here, I try to do. So really good kit for the money, $50 for all this. Uh, you can't complain with that. So we're gonna go ahead and reinstall those axles. So I have the jack here underneath the axle and I just lifted it up to meet the pin on the bottom of the leaf spring. We'll take our top plate, put that on the pin. And you take a couple of U-bolts and come up through the bottom. Your washers on top. Followed by your lock washers. And then your nuts. Brought me a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Thank you, baby. Yeah, thank you. Are you recording everything? Yeah, I am. Thank you. Enjoy it. My wife brought me peanut butter and jelly sandwich. You know you have a good wife when she makes it PB and J. Next, I'm going to try to pull these U-bolts together so they're tight against the perches, and then we'll start tightening them down. And I have to remember to flip these back up. Okay, well I got those pointed back up on both ends. I just had to put a jack under the middle, lift it up, and then kind of twist these a little bit, and they popped right where they needed to be. All right, we've got both axles back in the RV. Our shackles are pointed the right direction. None of these bolts are tight. So I'll go ahead and tighten all these bolts off camera. All right, a couple of weeks have gone by. I have finished the axle flip on here. I did get a pretty good lift out of it. I think I was about nine inches off from the fifth wheel plate to the fifth wheel in the truck before, and I'm only three inches off. So I got about six inches. I did go up a little bit in tire size. I had 205s on it before. And I went to the 225, 75, 15s. So I got about an inch in the tire and then five, five and a half inches in flipping the axles. So in the beginning of the video, I think we took measurements too of where we're sitting. So right now, right underneath that plastic pad, we're about 51 and a quarter. We ended up doing all new hardware, bolts. We double stacked those plates so that they wear a lot longer. Got galvanized uh, top plates, U-bolts, so they don't rust. I rehooked up these wires on both sides. But it turned out really, really nice. Found some uh, aluminum wheels on the old Facebook Marketplace, so we put those on there. So overall, I'm very happy with how the trailer looks. I haven't hooked it up to the truck yet, um, but before, the truck was 
much too tall for this and the trailer overall was going down the road like this and just looked stupid and I'm sure it didn't probably wear the tires great or make the suspension work like it should and there's a lot of weight on that rear axle so right now I'm real happy with how it looks it turned out really nice it looks much better with the aluminum wheels my wife and I have been working on the inside of the camper we pulled out all the carpet that was up here in the bedroom um, there's like a couch back here that we recovered we pulled off all the old hardware on the doors so just doing some little minor upgrades to the camper too that bring it up to maybe 2022 versus 1996 but for what we gave for the camper I think we're doing really really good we don't have much money into it I think the kit maybe that I put together was the lift kit was probably less than a hundred bucks I'll try to break it down in the description but hundred bucks to flip your axles if you have a welder um, I didn't go for the kit that you can bolt on and uh, I just didn't think that that was a, a great way to do it so if you if you don't have a welder maybe so but if you do or can take your axles to somebody to, to weld those top perches on there um, I think it's a much better way to go about it after we pull it around it'll probably be a couple months before we do that we'll give you an update on how it pulls how it looks how it sits but for now that's it cheap and easy way to get your camper up higher thanks for watching guys